All right, it's time to start exploring tables. Now, tables are a large part of iOS development, so it's really important that you understand how to use them. And there's a lot you can do with tables. But we're going to just start slow, and then we're going to build our way up into more advanced features in the tables. So the first thing I want you to do is to create, or sorry, open up a new project, make a single view application, and hit next. And you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to say my table view, something like that. And you click next. This should all be familiar to you by now. And if it's not, please go back and look at some of my earlier videos in getting started with Swift. And I click next. Okay, save it where you usually save it. And we get to the opening page. And let's start by going over to the main dot storyboard. And the first thing I like to do is click on my view controller and just switch the size out to 4.7. If you don't see this right hand side, just click on the upper right corner where it says hide or show utilities. Simple as that. Okay, now I have my document outline open here. If you don't want yours open or if you want to know how to toggle it, simply go down to this lower square and you just open it and close it. Okay. I guess I'll leave it closed for now. Okay, let's get started. Whoops, I'm just gonna drag him down. Now, I'm gonna start by adding a table view to this existing view controller. All right, now the first thing I wanna do is start typing in table down below. And as you see, there's a couple things come up. A table view controller, which we will get into in later, in later videos. I don't wanna get into that. Just now, I want to start off with a table view, which I find it to be a little bit easier to grasp as you're learning. Okay, so you get a table view and table view cell. We are looking for a table view. All right, so you can click on it, and I'm going to put it right in my view controller that exists now. The next thing we're going to do, just like we did with a UI picker view, I'm going to make a connection from this table view that I just inserted to where it says view controller right here, okay? And it's gonna let the view controller know that we are gonna be responsible for the data source, for whatever data is filled in here, and it's delegates, the table view delegates. And I'll, if it sounds strange right now, just bear with me, I'm gonna continue to explain this in this video and in future ones. So right now, I'm going to control, click and drag until I get to the yellow dot and it says view controller, release and I click next to data source. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Control, click and drag to the yellow button, which says view controller. Come on, okay, try this again. Control, click and drag, there we go, to the delegate. All right, so there's more to that and I will get back to that. Okay, now, so far so good, this is fine. We wanna add one prototype cell and that cell is going to repeat itself all the way through our list, okay? So I'm going over to the right. Make sure, make sure you have table view selected up here. Go to prototype cells and just click up for one. There you go. You know what? My, my table view is a little large, so let me see if I can't. Oops. There we go. I just want to get it a little bit down this so it's not crazy. Covering everything. There we go. There you go. Okay. So here's our table view cell. It's our prototype cell. This is, I believe, all we need to do for the interface builder. But before we do close it out, I just want to do one more, show you one more thing. This prototype cell, we need to give it an identifier, okay? And it'll be used in, uh, later on, but let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm clicking on it, making sure I've clicked the table view cell. Second line down, you're going to see identifier, and I'm going to simply type in capital C-E-L-L. -L. Now, you can put anything in here that you want, my cell or whatever, but just take note of what you write here because we're going to need this exact spelling in a um, method coming up. Okay, now I think we can close out our inspection pane or attributes pane, and let's go and open up our inspect, I'm um, sorry, assistant editor. So as we've done before, we are going to simply make an outlet. We're going to control, click and drag 
from the table view and I'm just going to call it table view. It's an outlet of type UI table view and hit connect. And up in here in our class line, we also want to let our file know that we will be conforming to the UI table view. Let me get this right. Table view data source protocols as well as the UI table view delegate just like we did when we made the connections in the storyboard we now are telling our swift file that we need to access and conform to some of these methods and as we as you can see right here xcode is getting a little angry at us because this our data source has two mandatory functions that we have yet to implement well xcode needs to calm down because i just finished typing it so <laughs> okay um but before we get to those two mandatory functions, I want to continue on and let's continue on our data source, which is going to be our array. So just like we did in uh, our, some picker view tutorials that we've done, we get our information from an array. So I'm going to create an array and this is going to just be an array of cities. That's going to be equal to open and close square brace, Chicago, I don't have my glasses on, so Chicago, bear with me if I misspell. Dallas, um, Miami, and Denver. Denver. Okay. There we go. Spelling all good. Fine. Great. Okay. So now let's start addressing our data source and our delegates. Now, in order to find out the functions that are mandatory, simply Put your cursor over the UI table view data source as you're hitting command. You'll get that little hand print. Okay, click on that. It'll take us right to the UI table view data source list of um, functions, I should say. And most of them will say optional, just to add different styles of what you need. However, there are two that do not say optional. The number of rows in section, and self row at index path. So let's attack the first one, okay? I'm gonna highlight it, command C to copy, go up to this black arrow and get back to my main, um, sorry, view controller.swift. And at this point, I don't think we need the storyboard open. I'm gonna close out my system editor and go back into view controller. There we go. Now we've got a lot more room. Okay, so I'm going to Come down near the bottom, paste that function in. Uh, let's say open and close curly brace and get in between there. All right, what is this function asking for us? Well, we need to know the number of rows. Don't worry about sections right now. We're only having one section, and that's just a section of cities. I think I just messed that thing up. There we go. Um, if we had different sections, maybe states and then cities within those states, those might have different sections. Since this is really geared toward beginning Swift, I just want to focus on having the one section. So we don't need to say how many sections are going to be in our table. It's inferred now. It used to not be, but it's inferred that it will, if we don't specify it, there will only be one section. All right. Sidetracked you a little bit there. Let's go back to this. Number of sections in a row. So how many rows are we going to need? How many rows? Well, we know we need at least four up here. And we could probably hard code it as return.4 because this is asking for a return of an integer. So we need to return a number. But we're going to do this. We're going to go return cities, that's our array, and access the count property. Okay, so that'll give us the exact number of rows needed for our table. Let's go back and find out what the second function is that's needed. I'm going to take my cursor up there, command click. Second one is this one, which is cell for row at index path and all of this. Okay. Command C, go back up to this left facing arrow and we're back in our file. And here we go. All right. This one's a little bit more in detailed. Whoops. I just typed it in the wrong place. Okay. Let's open and close curly brace. I'm going to get in between. Okay. 
Now, we've said how many rows we need. We didn't say what the rows should look like or what should be in the rows. So if we were to run this right now, we just have a bunch of empty rows with nothing in it. So we're gonna, let's set up a constant for our cell. Let's cell equal, access the table view, and we're gonna access the, now bear with me, it's a mouthful, D, Q, should start to auto-populate reusable cell with identifier string for index path index path. Now let's get let's take this one bite at a time. The DQ reusable cell is that the cells can get reused. It's, it's, you can have millions and millions of cells scrolling up and down, but it's called a reusable cell. It gets DQ'd and it's reusable. Okay, it has an identifier, and the identifier was. Special credit for anybody who knows or remembers it, cell, right? Where did we get this? Well, we got it from our main.storyboard, cell, cell identifier, okay? So if you've spelt this differently or did whatever, you've got to go back and make sure it is the exact same thing that is in this string. And then for index path, you just merely type in its index path. Oops, no E. Okay, so that's great. We've created a cell. Now let's put something in it. Still haven't put anything in it. Well, we're going to access its text label dot text property. And I'm going to get a warning, but I just want to explain this first. And that is going to be equal to cities. We're going to access the cities. Oops, or <laughs> array cities on its index path for each row. Okay. Now, I have one little thing. I know there's an error here, but that's really, because I need to, forgot to do one thing up here. When I'm calling this, I want to explicitly say it is a UI table, table view cell. Okay. You need to that, otherwise I'm going to get that error. And I'll, in, in here, it's the optional with a question mark. Okay, that should satisfy everybody's problem. That's fine. The only thing we haven't done is, well, we need to return something. We need to return a UA table view cell, which we created here. We created the cell here, and we filled it here. Okay, this is the information. This is where all the city names are going to come in. Let's not forget to finally return the cell. Just make this a little bit cleaner. Okay, I hope that's good. We've um, had the data source and the delegate explicitly written up here. We've made our uh, outlet connection. We created our data source, which is our variable called cities. And we implied, or, or sorry, um, uh, it added two of our main functions, the number of rows in a section, which means how many rows are we going to need. And that's just by counting up our array elements. And then we needed to know what the cells look like. What do these cells look like? So we had to create a cell. It's a reusable cell. And it's going to conform to whatever we have in our prototype cell that we called cell for index path. And we're explicitly saying it is a UI table view cell. And in here, we're saying, well, what do we want to put in the cell? Well, Get into our text label dot text property and put the information that's in each row from our array cities. And don't forget to return the cell. Okay, let's see what happens now. Here you go. Here's the three, I'm oh, sorry, four cities. Everything's fine. Now it doesn't really do much, but in upcoming videos, we're going to start creating a couple of apps that incorporate the use of these tables, including editing, deleting rows, adding to a table, and all sorts of good fun stuff. Okay, see you in the next lecture.